Lord God, we plead for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. We place, Lord, our lives, pleading forgiveness for our failures, seeing, Lord, that may have removed us from your presence. We ask that through the blood of Jesus, we may deliver the minds and hearts, removing, Lord, any tiredness, any preoccupation, and that we may now enter into your presence, and that you may renew our fellowship, and that we may hear your voice, what you have heard, you have prepared for us this Sabbath, so that you, we may remain in the dependence of your spirit. I pray that we say in the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. Let's begin by singing, when Jesus is blood shed. to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we want to praise your name because we can already uh, feel the, your presence and the effect of your blood uh, upon our lives. Your spirit and now is sealing each heart. Is placing us you hear ears only to hear what comes from your eternity, Lord. That's why we plead, Lord. You loves us, love us so much, Lord. Because that's why we love you back in the name of Jesus. Our gratitude, this song that we're going to express to the Lord, what we feel truly for Him. For the deeds of the Lord, for the blessings received for the victories that we have been able to reach in Jesus.
nome do Senhor. Glória a Deus. Aleluia. Glória a Jesus. Glory to God. The children as well, uh, they prepared a song. To God. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Praise group also prepared a song. Glory to Jesus. We're going to have a few words of adoration to the Lord because by faith we are waiting for the arrival of Jesus. When it's true, we will see him face to face and then we're going to receive his blessing. Lord, I want to praise you because this day is near. Your church is desired to be with you in eternity. As we praise you, Lord because you have helped us until this point. We praise you for your sustenance, for your strong hand upon your church. We praise you for your great love, for everything that you have done towards us. 
for our lives. We praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to praise our name for a presence in our lives. Lord, we glorify you because you are our greatest gift. As this year is coming to a close, you have not left us orphans. We praise you, God, because it's good to serve you. Bless be your name for everything you have done and all, for all that you ought to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to praise you because you have helped us up to this point. We glorify you, Lord, because although we have gone through several trials and tribulations, you have been with us. We have no words to express our gratitude. We praise you, Lord, because we are more than victorious. Bless be your name in the name of Jesus. Lord, we I want once again to recognize your lordship, your greatness. Recognize that you, only you are God. I praise you because we are here tonight, your church in this place. Lord, we want to thank you for all the blessings that you have operated in the midst of your people. I want to praise the Lord for the cures that you have performed. I want to thank, thank you especially for our, my life because you brought us the promise of cure and you are a faithful God, Lord. Only your presence that we can recognize all the benefit of the Lord in my house, in my family, in your church. Lord, thank you for all the difficulties because they brought us to come closer to your feet, Lord. And that's how we can live and see your hand laying upon us. Lord, thanks for the visitation of your Holy Spirit in the midst of the church and your, on your children, the, the children, and the intermediary and adolescents, Lord. We we'll pray that we may continue to sustain on the revelation of your hand. Lord, thank you for, because you are a living God, a God that gives, gives us direction, that shows us the path when we say that we have no way out. You have raised us up and you have sustained us. You told us we, we could. You said that it would be possible, Lord. And through your word, Lord, your word is, is true. Your word guide us, Lord. Thanks once again for this year. All the honor and all the glory be, may be given to you, Lord. The brethren there uh, behind. Did you hear? So the instruments can lower the volume much more. The environment is, is good. Less than half of what it is. El Shaddai. God El Shaddai.
I would like to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. There is a spiritual gift here. I think I'm going to read before we begin reading the word. A man that went astray from the path. It's been a while, but this year he had a deliverance from death. And the Lord told him that he wants, God wants you to go back. So this will be a, a different year. While remaining seated, we're going to open our Bibles. Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 11. Besides being the message, it's going to be the theme of the year. Every year, we have a theme. You remember the theme of last year, right? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. My brethren, we, every year, we, it's, it's the end of a year and the beginning of a new one. So we always begin, we finish one year in the presence of the Lord and begin a new year also in the presence of the Lord. But we're going to speak today about what is written in text, which is very important. Christianity lives a moment of its greatest crisis. Why? There's a factor which is very important that always moved Christianity. And this factor is completely worn out or completely, I could even say, ruined. It's the secret that moved the first church in all their trials, which was the faith. So we're going to speak about this. The whole Bible, from its beginning to this day, from the, uh, its early beginning, which was a project that was established by God. In fact, God in the Bible it speaks of two great project, projects. One initial project that is geared towards Israel. And we see the Bible speaks of the moment of Israel, the whole relationship of God with Israel, what God has done for Israel, the difficult moments, moments of trials. God never forsook Israel. But it is interesting that a few prophets in the Old Testament, they lamented the situation of the people and because of the way in which the people behaved in the presence of the Lord. For example, Jeremiah, at one point, the people was in such great calamity spiritually that the prof prophet Jeremiah was called uh, the crying prophet. He said uh, uh, once uh, in one of his laments, uh, I wish that my eyes would turn into water so then I would cry day and night for my people. So it was a lament of the prophet. So also Prophet Isaiah speaks about this of the situation of the people in a few moments. In a, a, mo a mo point in time, the prophet said, my people committed two mistakes. The first, they forgot about me, the source of uh, living waters, and made for them broken 
wells, cisterns. God has always been beside his people. God has never abandoned Israel. One example, this is David, one of the greatest kings of Israel. David never uh, had to deal with loss. And to this day, Israel reverence David as a king. And the pride of Israel is their air force. And if you pass by their planes, you see the star. And the star is a symbol of the King David. And David said on the height of his power, he was never defeated. He said at one point in time, at the height of his power, I am a, the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. It was not his power and of his or, or his army. Her valiance are, were well known. He had 37 soldiers, very valiant. They were one more notable than the other. It was not his army. It was not his bellic power uh, or his courage because he was a courageous man. Once his son rebelled against him and sought, sought uh, advice with Atofel and then he said, give me 10,000 men and I'll kill your father. And then Atofel said, your father is different. There is something with him. And he said uh, uh, once, you know me. It was a prayer of a man that knew God. You searched me. You know me. You saw me at, in the womb of my mother while I was still a shapeless form. You know how I'll wake up and I'll, how I'll walk and the words that come to me before I speak them. And this is wonderful for me to know this. In spite of this, many didn't understand. Many rebelled. But God has always been faithful. In spite, in spite of the people uh, behaving in an unfaithful way. So that was the first covenant of Israel with his people. God made the promise down back on the Old Testament saying, I'm going to call a people of my people, a people that is not my people. So God now speaks of a second project. It's not a project now, now, no longer geared towards Israel, but it's a project geared towards those that are not Jews, that are not descendants of Abraham, and considered by the law as cursed, but God promised somebody special. So the prophet Isaiah speaks of someone that was going to come and would take upon him our pain, our infirmity. He speaks of the second project. And the second project begins in the person of the Lord Jesus. How interesting this is. Jesus, it feels like he became a man that was so simple. It seems to be a name that is so common. And people, when they remember about him, they remember him as, as a caricature, something grotesque or a picture or a sculpture. Jesus was never photographed. There was no foot. Uh, photograph a camera he never posed for any famous artist he was never depicted on a painting oh the people say that when this woman was when he was going up to be crucified a woman dried up his face and then they claim that that's Jesus's face they think about Jesus completely distorted uh, some something uh, only skin and bones look the only image of Jesus that we know is the one that John saw that the one that he saw in the book of Revelations not as a man but now as uh, Jesus glorified there overcame death and resurrected and when John saw he said he has hair is like a, a white wall and his eyes like a flaming and his body uh, dressed up with um, 
fine linen, and his voice like a voice of many waters. Is the Jesus glorified? But this is not the Jesus that the world sees today. That's why I said that the faith became vulner vulnerable. It doesn't exist. It became mystical, superstitious. Become a, a decoration. You put it around your neck. But the church prepares themselves in this moment, inside of the prophecy, for a great moment. Nobody will avoid this. It's very clear in the prophecies. The word is upon the judgment. Jesus prophesies in the chapter 24, 25 of Matthew, a judgment, a judgment upon the governments. Everybody knows it's there on the chapter 24 of Matthew, a judgment upon the government, a judgment upon the nature. Nature is, uh, is suffering there, a judgment upon man. That's it. Nobody will escape from it. And God prepared Jerusalem for a great moment. Everybody's speaking about Jerusalem. That's right. Jerusalem will be the center of all of it. Why? Because the project of God is subdivided in Israel, right, the first part. But the second part, which is for us, is focused on Jesus. And John saw here the church that begins on Pentecost and begin right soon after the death and resurrection. So after the resurrection, he stays here for 40 days. And then after Pentecost 50, which is the celebration of Pentecost, begins a church that will only finish on the rapture. And John saw the church in throughout this entire period in a single moment, on a single time. Why? Because the Bible says that there are two types, times. Ours is chronos, which in Greek means a time that can be measured. That's when the word chronometer comes from. But there is another time that is not ours. And the Bible says that there, um, the light, and so in the speed of light, chronos practically doesn't exist. Einstein, when he is said on the theory of relativity, the fourth measure is going to be the time. He's saying that time is relative, so if you travel at the speed of light, there's no time. There's no time. So for God, it doesn't ex time doesn't exist. It only exists for us. When God sees the church, he sees on a single time. So when John on Revelation saw the church, he saw in a single time, and then he saw the church raptured. So then they ask a question to John. How did they overcome? John had a vision of the church. Now, and all this, all the way through its past, after the rapture, and, and they ask, how did, was he able to, they, how were they able to overcome? And here's the answer. They overcame through the blood and through the word. Faith at this moment is linked to these two elements of the word. And who is not linked to this, this faith doesn't exist. That's why people believe in Jesus for this life in Brazil. Jesus is wonderful to uh, deliver men from the line of uh, uh, health care in Brazil, which is free. And and uh, church, all the church, the peop people uh, publicize that they're going to have cures. Jesus came to cure, but uh, the greatest mission of Jesus, not just to cure, is to give eternal life. So then the second project is, which is centered exactly here, which is the word and the blood, the word and blood. So we have here the Bible. Here it is. One day, it came from God, but this is just letter. But there is a mystery inside of it. There's a secret inside of it that came from God. And how are you able to achieve and understand this secret? When, how, what was the description that when John saw Jesus in chapter 19? And he was 
clothed when, on a rope sprinkled with blood. And he recognized it was Jesus. It was interesting. He saw Jesus in a vision that he had. I saw a man dressed with a garment sprinkled with the blood. And before he said, he's Jesus, somebody said, his name is the Word. You know why? Because he fulfilled the Word. He is the Word. Because the Old Testament speaks of him, and the New Testament is fulfilled when he comes, becomes man, he dies, and fulfills, and completes the second project, which is for us. It's for us. The, third, the blood that he shed, that's why the last phrase that he says, still as a man, there, nailed on the cross, he looks towards everyone, he forgives everyone, that's, that's right, he came for that moment, then he prays to his father, and he says, Father, everything is finished. And so in one of the words, he said, I fulfilled the project, everything that you ter determined to me, I fulfilled, I came for this, he fulfilled the project there, and he said, everything is finished. So in other words, at the moment, he fulfills the project that rescues you. And this is what you need to understand. This faith is, uh, has been vanished. People don't understand this, this secret anymore. People seek Jesus for this life to help them get married, to find money, to get cured. And, but they miss this wonderful project because when the criminal was, who was in, in the cross, he became he converts. Jesus said, you, you will be with me in the paradise today. So when the 70 came back and they all said that they were amazed with everything that had happened, Jesus asked, why are you so happy? Because peop the spirits submit to us and we uh, people are cured. And Jesus said, are you surprised with that? You should be happy because your name is written in the book of life. God is going. Jesus is going to. Uh, God is going to bless Israel. Don't worry about it. Oh, the Christians that are in favor of Israel against. No, no. It's, it's nothing to do with this. We have nothing to do with this, with politics or objective is prophetic. Nothing to do with people. We have in our midst converted Jews, or deacons, or ushers. Jews and Muslims, they have been converted. They all hugging each other and they were both converted. Our objective is not this, it's prophetic objective. And something that we need to understand at this moment is what God has for the, for the church at this moment. People are very distracted. It's very easy. It's very easy for you to transform Christianity into a uh, parade. People, people like this. They get distracted. They are very animated and beautiful things. But they are forgetting that at any moment, the trumpet will be sounding. And what is the project that directs your life to our lives, in what way you will overcome? How will, will you overcome? One day, we'll, well, oh, I was victorious because no, no, because your pastor is very nice. He was good looking. He sang and, and played instrument. He was wonderful. I participated in a seminar in on England, and people said, "Look, look, this church." We rented a place, and they said, this church here, this church only attends the, the church of Pentecostal Christians. Only soccer players come here. And look, look, Pastor, on his uh, pastor's birthday, they gave him a BMW X5. I never got, I never got a bicycle, but I'm not worried about that. And you should not be worried about this. I'm not complaining what, of what happened there. 
have nothing to do with this. People like, they are very amazed with it. But you will overcome, you'll be victorious. You overcome this world that is out there filled with philosophy, filled with theology that don't lead anyone to heaven. You will be victorious on your struggle. How? The youth are going to be victorious in universities, on the internet, on TV. How are going to be vic victorious? What attacks the, the mind every instant? Forty years ago, there's a pastor, American pastor, David Wilkerson, everybody knows, he's already passed away. One day he said something, it was very interesting, 40 years ago he said, Las Vegas, each second in Las Vegas, one, one um, neon blink calling man to sing. Uh, 40 years later, can you imagine, we have an internet, uh, we have everything around you, how will you be able to overcome this? How, go, how are you going to be victorious? How your son will be victorious? How you, the children are going to be victorious? How the family will be victorious? No, I didn't buy a manual on how to educate my child without any effort. Uh, no, I have a book about a psychiatrist that is going to help me out. You, do you think that that's how you're going to be victorious? John saw there. How did they win? Through the word and through the blood. It's not only the word, because the Bible, here is just letter. It's paper, it can catch on fire. But when you bring to the altar the sacrifice of the Son, when you present to the Father the sacrifice of the Son, then you are pleading for the blood. So then, this word has life. It speaks to you. How many times do you plead for the blood of Jesus and you open up the Bible and the word speaks to you? It's not the letter because the letter kills. The letter kills. But the spirit vivifies. So when you plead for the blood of Jesus, Jesus this word has life. How interesting this is, right? I remember... I remember um, a lady, she was uh, n a newborn Christian, she came home, uh, her, there was a child that had uh, meningitis, he got into a coma, and the doctor said that the child was going to be, have, a, be, have a brain dead, and they were thinking about even turning off the equipment and she was desperate it's normal so then she came home and said I'm not ready to lose my son what am I going to do God could have operated a miracle no no God give me a word speak to me then she said but the power that is in the blood of Jesus give my word and, she, and then she opened up the Bible and under her finger, uh, the word was saying, this sickness is not going to lead to death. It's for the glory of God. So then she went to bed and slept. Next day, she went to the hospital and said, the doctors came to her and said, there was a miracle. And she said, yes. Your son woke up. She got up, He got out of the coma. Nobody was expecting this anymore. But she said, my, my God spoke to me. How did this woman overcome the most difficult moment of her life? Through the blood and the word. And they overcame through the word and through the blood. John saw the victorious church. It was not because my, uh, through my argument or through someone else's argument or someone argument of someone that was better looking or church that has 4,000 members. The other day, uh, I met um, um, a lady from here, and she said, "Hey, how are you doing there?" Um, I, I go to my, I live in Miami. My church has 4,000 members, but when Jesus, when he departed, he disappointed everybody. He left the church with thousands and thousands of people. 
He cured blind. He resurrected the dead. He did so many mir miraculous things and left the church with just 100, 150 people. Like the church that we have here, 150. This is the size of the church when Jesus left. Nobody's worried about quantity. Nobody's worried about that. This is not important. Important is, are you being victorious? Are you being victorious? Or are you being defeated by the sin, by death, for, by mer the misery? No, no, I, I tied them. No, no, I, I tied. The Catholic Church sold indulgences. And you see what happened? Everybody that bought indulgence, they would buy indulgence. They spent, they could do whatever they wanted, everything that they wanted, hoping that we're going to go to heaven. It doesn't matter. What matters is that John saw a church that overcame. That how was this church victorious? Uh, I'm not the one who's saying it. It is in the Bible. I had a conversation with an expert here, a physicist. He's from our church. He has done a doctor in, in IT. It, it th sounds like it's important. It was the first place in post-doctorate. He is uh, the manager of uh, Intelsat uh, Satellite in Brazil. So I was asking in Brazil, so get the formula of Einstein. EMC square it was what he wanted to demonstrate, but the real formula is very long. So then he said, get this formula and apply this formula of Einstein and put 2,000 years on the speed of light and tell me how it's going to be, what is going to be the result. I want to know. I, I, I'm going to bring home, and, uh, and tomorrow I'll, I'll give it to you. The following day, he said, I have a surprise for you. You know what? How 2,000 years on the speed of life, you know what? It, so you know how it is reduced to? one thousandth of a second. You know what it is? It just passed. <laughs> it just passed. Look. Good looks from his eternity. And he sees the church on a single moment. He saw the church being born, uh, church going to the arenas, going to saw, saw the church walking and going to eternity and the paradise. In a single moment, John saw the church on eternity. He saw you, my brother. You know, in Miami, Orlando, everything was past. Brazil, with all the difficulties we have there, living that struggle. One still there, <laughs> the other still. Imagine you in eternity, there was going to be crying, sadness, and tears. You're part of the second project. Israel is the first. Yeah, they're, they're going through trials. They're notable men in the Old Testament, like David or many others. But you're part of the second project. And the second project is blood and the word. When you mix these two thing, this th things here, this has life. That's why this word moves us. I already told an experience to you guys, and I'll tell it again. I always tell it more than once. My oldest daughter, she's not here, so I can speak about her. I don't like that she goes to the service because she goes to the service and she's a doctor and she says, Daddy, I'm going to take you to a neurologist. I think he, you're beginning to have Alzheimer's. And I asked, why? Because you're repeating yourself too much. 
Daddy, you already said this twice. In my church, you said it twice. Don't you remember? It's okay. If I was armor, it's possible. So I'm going to tell you that once again. There's always someone that never heard. I was on a seminar on Manaim, a retreat in Brazil. And a woman, I spoke about the Bible, and a woman approached me and said, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to share with you an experience. Uh, she said I was not a Christian, and a woman gave me the Bible. A neighbor gave me the Bible. I gave the Bible since I was not a Christian. I brought the Bible to my church, and they said, no, this Bible is a Protestant Bible. Set it on fire. So then I went home. I and I put alcohol on it and set it on fire. Yeah, almost. So they threw the rest on a garbage container. And on my street there was a drunk. It's an annoying drunk. He was not angry. It's just annoying. He sleeps on the sidewalk. He had a couple of uh, blankets, dirty old blankets. He sleeps on the sidewalk and woke, wakes up drunk and he sleeps drunk. A big beard, big hair, and a horrible smell. Terrible. But one day, he came to our, my house and he rang the bell and he came. Oh, boy. Then I asked him, what do you want? And he said, I'm hungry. Can you give me lunch? And he said, I, I'm not going to, I don't want you to enter into my house. He's thinking too much. But he said, I'm, I'm very hungry. So she said um, I was sorry for him then I said I'm going to give you lunch but one condition go to the to them so you put all the the garbage on that container put it on the on a bag and bring to the the tr truck to pick it up so then the homeless went back bagged all the garbage and he came back with the Bible, a burnt Bible. He said, oh, I found this in the garbage and it looks like it's a Bible. And he said, show everything in the garbage because I told you to show it in the garbage. Then he said, okay. So he had lunch uh, and then he left. So the other day, the drunk vanished. Everybody was asking, why is the drunk? The sidewalk was empty week later, everybody was asking, where is the drunk? Did the drunk die? Maybe the police took him away? And everybody was talking about him. So then, six months later, I was walking on the street, and there was a young man, very good looking. Young man. And he touched my shoulder and he said, look. And I looked at him, and I said, I don't know you. And he said, you don't know me? No, I don't know you. Where do I know? Where do I know you from? And he told her, "Do you remember? I did a job for you. What kind of job did you do for me? You don't recognize me. I was that drunk." And she said, "What? What happened to you? Remember the job that I did for you? I cleaned up your container and uh, bagged all the garbage." And I, I found a Bible. Remember, all burned up? He told me to throw it away. Well, you told me to do this, but I didn't. I crossed the street, I sat down, and opened it up. When I opened it up, God spoke to me. I changed at that moment. What an amazing thing. What, hap what does this have? Uh, a Bible that was burned up, it had no cover, but when he opened up, the Spirit operated there. Look. They overcame through the blood and through the Word. And she said, I was so amazed that I asked him, take me to your church. And then I went, and I became a Christian. Now I'm on this seminar because I became a Christian on his church. Well, 
when we begin uh, with this church, we begin uh, in January. We begin the 50, we complete 50 years of age in October of this year that is coming. When we begin, when it was, I was not in the beginning, I came later, but the Lord said at the very beginning, the Lord said, I'm going to show you a secret. You need to plead for the blood of Jesus. And a while later, God said, I'm going to show you another secret, a word. I want people to go back to my word and you plead for the blood of Jesus and I will introduce you to my word. And we didn't understand anything. The blood and the word. We began to understand amazing things and the secrets of the word. The pleading for the blood and the word. And John saw that in Revelations because they overcame through the word. This is the theme for this year. And you're going to take home the following. You will also be victorious. The new year is coming. Trials. You're going to have a trials. You can have. But say today, I will overcome. In the same way John saw the church that overcame, not by my own, but my qualities. Because of my, my merits but I'll overcome through the blood and through the word, which is the theme of this year. Amen. Glorify softly. We're going to do the, the phone. Let us play softly. Here it is. How beautiful this is. This is the theme of the year. You're going to get home and you say, we'll overcome. Every time you are in a trial, you can say, I'll overcome. Because John saw through the blood of the Lamb, the testimony, which is the Word, the living Word. And the Word to Hebrews, um, the Word is living and efficient. Do you know the song, Holy, Holy, Holy? It's from here, from the church. Do you know? No. no. So play a soft song. Yeah, the church will glorify softly. We're now just, there's five minutes left. In five minutes, we're going to stand up or kneel down. According to, I don't think it's, there's enough room for people to kneel down. Okay, so then we can kneel down. Let's close our eyes. Begin to glorify the Lord. You're going to tell the Lord, Lord, I will overcome. It can be very soft. Glory to God.
let us kneel down. If it's not possible, you can't stand up. Nothing wrong with that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I brought to you tonight. And this this food will be strong for your lives, for your spiritual walk. You'll be strengthened by my word. I live so that you may live and my grace will be poured out upon everyone that pleads for my blood. Glorify my name. Because you have received tonight a portion of my word that will strengthen you on your path. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And they overcame through the blood and through the word. The year has come to a close. And we were victorious. The year that is, is beginning, we will also be victorious. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah.
church will stand up. Lord to Jesus. Hello, Lord. Lord, we praise your name for the year that has passed, for the new year. We were victorious, Lord, and we will continue to be victorious. Lord, bless now your people, even those that were not able to be here because of work or health. Give them a blessing, bless their families, so that your word may not come back empty. And what was not complete, that you may complete yourself in each heart. And the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to remind you, the theme of last year was what? What was less the theme of last year? Where's last year's theme? Give Lord because it's coming his judgment. The judgment's here. I spoke before about the judgment. The judgment upon the world. Chapter 24, the prophetic sermon of Jesus. His judgment upon the nature and creative work, judgment upon the governments and upon men. Because his judgment is coming. And but praise those the one who made heaven and earth. So now the theme of this year. And they overcame. Remember, uh, beginning on the, the first and uh, to the 31st of the end of this year, uh, you may face uh, more difficult moments, but remember the Bible. Remember the theme of the year. Remember that, Lord, what is here, one day came from the heart of God. So I want this to have the same life that he had on the day you spoke it. So then you, so then you will, I want to present something that, in the throne of God. It was the first project of God. He present the, the flesh of the animal. And you, who are according to the project, you present a God who is much more perfect, which is the blood of the Lamb of God. So I want to present in your presence the, the blood of the Lamb. Give life to this word. So, so when you read this word, don't fulfill this. Let, let's fulfill this word. At the end of the day, we'll, we'll, we'll share this experience. Maybe next year, we'll come back to, to another video. Who knows? So sit down there. But there is another thing. Next year, the dinner has to be afterwards. If you allowed a little, lo a little more, there would, it was not going to be a service. It was going to be just dinner. Nobody wanted to leave the dinner. So I thought it was going to be the end. But all the difficulty, we were also ab were able to overcome the, the dessert. And there is a group of people here that you cannot give them uh, the dessert. Oh, boy. This so the next dinner I'm going to bring here. Uh, lettuce, tomato. Amen. Look. Greet one another. Don't go just uh, running out. God is for all of us. But greet of one. Even the one that you don't like very much. Uh, peace of the Lord. Uh, my goodness. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, God of mercy. What a try for me to embrace that sister. Oh, I made such an effort. But look, the word doesn't speak about this. The blood and the word doesn't speak about this. 
embrace with joy. Like if even if you really liked her, embrace like that. Amen. It's over. With your brother. <laughs>